Guthrun and Otli are married, and they have two sons, Erp and Eitil, but the marriage is not a happy one. And Otli, in particular, begins to envy the great treasure of Sigurd that Gunnar and Hogni now own. He believes that it rightfully should be his because Guthrun, being his wife, is formerly Sigurd's wife, so she should have inherited Sigurd's treasure, and then Otli should have had it as her husband. And so he constantly plots ways to get this treasure from Gunnar and Hogni. And finally, he sends a messenger to Gunnar and Hogni to invite them to a party at his place, offering also that they will receive lands from him and treasures. Guthrun doesn't want her brothers to be um, murdered by Otli when they come to this ambush, so she sends two messages. One a little bit ambiguous, but uh, much older in the tradition. This shows up even in the Poetic Edda in the poem Atlakvida, which is the oldest or one of the two oldest poems in the Poetic Edda. And this is a golden ring that has a wolf's hair tied around it, apparently symbolizing that Otli has wolfish intent. And then she also, uh, this is a little bit later tradition that's also in the Saga of the Volsungs, carves a message in runes warning Gunnar and Hogni not to come, and these are sent with the messenger. But along the way, the messenger modifies the runes that Guthrun has written, uh, carves something different into it to modify the message and make it look innocuous. Kind of like when you're a kid on the uh, bus coming home from school and you've got an F on your report card and you, mo you, uh, you modify it a little bit, you draw little curves to turn that F into a B. Two ravens just flew over me so loudly I thought someone was <laughs> swinging an axe behind me. Uh, all right. So the, the messenger comes to Gunnar and Hogni, presents them the message, and Hogni is suspicious. He says, why do we need treasures from Atli when we have you know, this vast treasure from Sigurd, which only seems to have grown since it was enough to cover an otter. Uh, but Gunnar, the saga says, because he was drunk and because it was his fate, decides that he will come, and because Gunnar decides it, so does Hogni. Now that night, uh, Hogni's wife and Gunnar's wife both have dreams that indicate that uh, they will be ambushed once they get to Hunland, where Otli is king. And uh, then Hogni's wife also, uh, Hogni's wife is Kostbera, or simply Bera, uh, depending on the page of the manuscript. She reads the message in runes from Guthrun. It's interesting that it's always women doing the runes in this saga, and thinks that there's something wrong with it. The message has been modified. She thinks that it's not as innocuous as it's been made to seem. And so she's very worried. But both Gunnar and Hogni dismiss their wives' dreams and uh, go anyway. So, of course, once they get to Hunland, well, as they're crossing a particular river on their way, they actually uh, they realize that the messenger Kenefroth has deceitful intent, and so they beat him to death with axes. Uh, but they keep going anyway, and once they get there, uh, Guthrun says, you know, I warned you not to come. Uh, why did you come? I wish you'd come with an army. But at any rate, uh, they are attacked. Guthrun fights alongside her brothers. She puts on armor and wields a sword. Uh, but Gunnar and Hogni are defeated and they are chained up. Um, now, the Huns really respect Hogni. He's killed seven men single-handedly. He's a fantastic warrior. Everyone knows him as an honorable dranger. Uh, but they separate Gunnar and Hogni and they interrogate them looking for an answer about where the treasure of Sigurd is. Apparently they've hidden it somewhere in the Rhine River, one of the only real geographical places that's mentioned in this saga. Well, Gunnar says that he will tell Atli where the treasure is if, and only if, Atli will bring him his brother Hogni's heart on a plate. So the Huns go to Hogni, ready to cut his heart out, but they just can't bring themselves to do it. He's such an awesome guy. And so instead, they propose to cut out the heart of a slave named Hjali. Hjali begs them not to do it, and Hogni even says, look, I can't stand to listen to this unmanly begging, just cut my heart out. But nonetheless, they cut out the heart of Hjali and they bring it to Gunnar. And Gunnar promptly says, Her have ek hjarta, Hjala, and splauda. Here I have the heart of Hjali, the, the wet one. This is a word 
uh, associated with uh, femininity and of course it's insulting uh, when used of a man. He says this heart is trembling on the plate and it trembled even more in that coward's chest. He says, bring me my own brother's heart, I'll know it. And so they go and they cut out Hogni's heart and he laughs as he does it in a fantastic display of drank scupper, Norse manliness. And then they bring Gunnar this heart and Gunnar says, Her have a Hogna and Sfrukna. Here I have the heart of the bold Hogni. It barely trembles on the plate and it trembled even less in his chest. Uh, this is an interesting uh, set of assumptions about biology. <laughs> At any rate, now he says, well, I know that my brother Hogni is dead, so I know that I'm the only one who knows what the treasure is. And that means that no one will ever tell you because I know that I won't. Of course, we look at this and we wonder why he was suspicious that his brother Hogni, who got his heart cut out of his chest and laughed while they did it, uh, would ever tell them where the treasure was. But whatever, Gunnar is now convinced that he's the only one who knows and uh, he's, the secret is safe with him. So Oddly has him thrown into a snake pit and killed that way. But he gets one last flourish of greatness as Guthrun throws him a harp, which he plays with his toes, his hands are bound up. Uh, luring the snakes to sleep, except for one huge snake that bites him in the neck and kills him. Well, Atli is convinced by Guthrun to throw a funeral feast, both for his men who have died in the combat with Gunnar and Hogni, and also for Gunnar and Hogni, uh, the brothers of his wife Guthrun. And as they're preparing for this feast, Guthrun calls over her two little sons, Erp and Atil, and kills them. Then she cooks their meat mixes their blood with honey to make a drink, and then makes a set of drinking vessels out of their skulls. She serves these to Atli, um, who is told only after he has eaten some of this flesh and drunk some of this wine uh, that these are actually his children. And then that night, after going to bed together, you've got to admire these couples that, you know, can get over child murder and then actually still put their differences aside and sleep without being angry at each other. Uh, she kills Otley in his bed together with uh, Hogni's son, Volsung, I mean Niblung. <laughs> and then uh, she burns down his hall, killing all of his men with him. And then she takes her daughter with Sigurd Svanhild, who has never been mentioned previous to this, and jumps into the ocean in an attempt to kill herself and Svanhild. I'll pick the story up with its conclusion in the next video in this series as I continue my tour through the saga of the Volsungs. For now, from beautiful Colorado, I'm wishing you all the best.